Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, your daily fix of football chat here <laughs> on STV. The main talking points tonight, Dundee see off Falkirk to set up a fifth round Scottish Cup tie at Dumbarton. Congratulations to junior side Linlithgow Rose, they defeated Forfar and now they can look forward to a tie, of course, away to Ross County. And after all the fuss... Uh, East Kilbride will now play Celtic at Airdrie Stadium. Just a few of the topics on the programme tonight. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin. I'm delighted to say our bookroom guest is Dundee's assistant manager, Jerry McCabe. Um, Jerry, delighted that uh, you've come on the show. Uh, Ruffy and I, with this latest bit of technology we have here, we've been looking. I mean, your midfielders and your defence are murder, Ruffy, aren't they? I mean, three goals, you should have scored five. Well, you're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to get any of it. No, absolutely not. I mean, you're my, I, love, I love him. The manager has a dig at his Ruffy. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, he has a go at the media. Yeah, that was a good dig. You know, I thought it was... Uh, it was. Uh, I think everybody took it on board that, uh, quite rightly as well. You know, I mean, I, I'm obviously a pundit now, but I, I can see where managers get to a limit and they go say, oh, I'm not having that. Well, yeah. why, why, why should I sit here and take that? Oh, and then you, they just respond. You play double agent, no, are you no, now? That just cross the divide. No, eh? no, you know what I mean? You, you have to keep yeah. your mouth shut and you have to watch what you're saying. Don't bother asking Jerry. He's not no. going to comment on it. But the good point is, listen, um, in the media, if we give it out, you've got to take it back. It's as simple as that. To the job in hand, you managed to see off Falkirk. Falkirk, it was always going to be tough because they are a, a good footballing side, Jerry. Yeah, we had them watch since the draw was made. We've watched them about five times. Uh, the managers went three or four times. Somebody else watched them, myself and the manager watched them against Alba. But we know that when Peter Houston's you know, in charge of a team, that kind of football they're going to play. And they've got a lot of good players. And we knew going into the game, difficult tie. Uh, people were maybe expecting us you know, to slip up there. But we, we made sure, you know, that we had them well watched. We'd, we'd, done our, we'd done our job on them, our homework on them. But at the end of the day, you've got to go out and play, perform in the night. Yeah. I thought in the first half, Falkirk were very good because there was some problems in the first half. And albeit, you know, uh, they were hitting against the wind in the first half and up the way. And in the second half, we seemed to play better in the second half against the wind, so which, which is quite strange because hitting in the slope, you usually, we, we find we play, we do, we, we, we create a lot of chances. But it was good to get through that tie because, yeah, you know, they're a very good side and they'll, they'll certainly finish in the top four. Yeah, your manager was glowing in his praise of a number of players. What, what in particular pleased both yourself and Paul? Well, the way uh, we've, we've got... Uh, uh, Gary Harkins is now, you know, on his game. He's fit. And I think Gary Harkins would never be out your team, you know, the ability he's got. And he's got the uh, captain's armband at the moment. And I think he's taking on that responsibility. We've got Kane Hemmings, who's in fire. He's scoring week in, week out. It's just he's a threat up front. Plays up front himself, but you know he works his works his socks off. You know, and he's, he's certainly reaping the rewards. Uh, all over the park, you know. We've we've had one or two. We've, obviously, we've lost James McPake, who's a big loss to us uh, with with a bad injury. We brought in Darren D. Obviously, he wasn't available for last night, but I think he's a good talker, good organizer. And I think it'll be a great acquisition to the team, but. It, Overall, you know, we've, we've got a hard working uh, bunch of players, you know, we know what we're getting out of them. Yeah, just on that point, I mean, significantly you had to make a decision on who was going to take over the captain's armband. Uh, did the two of you guys sit down and say, you know, listen, this could be, uh, you know, a, a real spur for Gary Harkins? Because, to be fair to him, he's been on this programme and he put in a shift in the summer mm. to make sure he was going to be fit for you. Yeah, I think, you know, when you look at Gary and the way he's come back this summer, he's worked so hard. Uh, he, he's in a good place at the moment, and obviously the gaffer says, "Look, I think it's a good idea. They give him that responsibility, and he's took it on board. He's good about the dressing room. He's good with the boys. He's good with the young boys, and you can see him on the pitch now. You know, he's got that, he's got the swagger back, uh, so to speak. And I think it's been a good move for the for the manager to give him the captain's armband. Every, every time he comes on, you know, I, I labour him with that uh, luxury <laughs> player tag, and uh, Done it myself. And, uh, <laughs> And uh, if you can get a luxury player like that who produces the goods, it makes it even better. But what I was going to ask you was, when you're putting Gary in the in the side, do you ha do you need much adjustment to the overall side? Yeah, well, I know what you're saying there, Robbie. You, you know, if you've got runners round about him, but I think he maybe last season uh, he was a luxury player for us, and we you know we end up uh, it cost us, and uh, Gary knew himself. 
But as I say, he's worked so hard now and he's fitting into that. You know, we can play him the one off and we play him in the middle of the three, but we've got guys like uh, Paul McGowan. He just works, he, he trains the way he plays. Uh, Nick, Nick Ross is a, another player. He's very quiet going through the game. He's not a voiceless person on the part, but what a shift he puts in. And I think that compensates for, for Gary's, you know, probably lack of pace. But when you give Gary the ball, you know something's mm. going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. He's been uh, a joy to watch. Certainly, the uh, the goal he scored um, was an well, <coughs> he scored two good goals, um, but one of them was an absolute peach uh, last week, Rafi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said to him when he was on the show, it was a training ground goal. You know, yeah. when they obviously mm -hmm. you get bags of time, nobody's shutting you down, and if you allow somebody with, with, with Gary's ability, you know, they're just going to take a look up, and then it's curling in the top corner, and that's the ability he's got to do that. Well, he was involved in all the goals last mm -hmm. week against Partick. Uh, I'll tell you. He scored. Uh, he scores two. He makes one for. Uh, well, he gets a penalty kick for Kane Hemmings and Greg Stewart's goal. And Greg's another one who's been chipping in. He's just. Uh, he's going. He's getting better with every game. He's going from strength to strength. And it was a sort of a gamble when they brought him in. You know, from Cowden Beath. It was. Yeah. A, it was a bit. Of, you know, they're saying, can you make that leap to the SPL? But he's certainly took. He's certainly one who could go in and play. At a higher level again. Yeah, um, Rafi, um, you conducted the uh, uh, Scottish Junior Cup fifth round draw yesterday for us, um, and in the end, you got your wish with Linlithgow Rose. Mm -hmm. Maybe I think a lot of people might have looked at that as a shock. You thought they might edge it against Forfa. Yeah, I think they're a really organised side. Uh, and looking at the first game, uh, it was three each. Uh, they had the chances to win that, and I know going up there, obviously Forfa. Been through a wee bit of a bad time just now, and uh, you know, all credit to them, they've, they've been there or thereabouts, even in the Junior Cup for a long, long time. And it's a wonderful setup. And when that discussion always comes up about junior clubs stepping up uh, into the seniors, they would be one of the teams with the facilities <coughs> they've got to do that. Whether they would want to do it is another thing, yeah. And to be fair, I'd be gobsmacked if they could get past uh, Ross County, no disrespect to them. Yeah, I think Ross County at home uh, should enough firepower, uh, enough professionals to see that one out. But uh, I'm sure they've got up there and gather a good account of themselves. So. Yeah, and you get into uh, Jerry favourites at Dumbarton. Well, you always find you always like a home tie, but yes, you, we've got the players, but they've got to perform on the day. I know how difficult a place it was. I was at the man, I was the manager at uh, Dumbarton. When I mean, teams come down there, they didn't fancy it. All the pens and that wind if it's swirling, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> You would like to think we'd get down there and we've been professional. We'll certainly do our homework on them again. We'll, be, we'll have them well watched and hopefully on the day we can get through the quarterfinals. Yeah, uh, just before we <coughs> get to the break, Rafi, finally it's been resolved. East Kilbride will play <laughs> Celtic um, at the Excelsior Stadium, um, Airdrie's home ground. Um, the previous ground that they were suggesting was Hamilton, which obviously holds 6,000. Um, I'm not trying to put words into your mouth here, but the Airdrie Stadium holds 10,200. Yeah, exactly, and uh, quite rightly so. Uh, I think when you're at a club like East Kilbride, you want to get as much money as possible. They're actually getting the, the TV <coughs> rights as well, which will be more money, and yeah. they'll, they'll be trying to exploit that day for a, as much as possible because uh, it's a long, long year that uh, they need the money. Yeah, I, I'm not knocking them for that, um, Jerry. I just think the whole thing could have been handled ten times better. Um, by the SFA uh, and of course the clubs, but I still think it's the SFA's tournament. Pick the ground, move on. Yeah, I'm surprised they never uh, you know, contacted Hamilton Aki's, you know, because I know Hamilton Aki Stadium's occupied every day, every night. Yep. There's always something going on in it, and obviously they've got events on in it. Maybe if they'd consulted them with them, maybe they could have said, OK, we can maybe accommodate that day. But to say that they're going there, then Hamilton Aki says, no, you're not. It looks as if they've... They've not done their, you know, they've not done their work on it, and surprise, you know, as as Al says, you know, East Coast have got to try and make as much money as they're going to going to make out of this tie. You know, obviously, it goes to Airdrie. Celtic will probably, you know, they'll sell it out. I think about seven or eight thousand anyway. So I think they've got to cash in on that. Yeah, and of course, let's not forget the East Kilbride ex-Pats, Ruffy, who'll be coming home to watch the <laughs> game as well. <laughs> as Mark Horner says, the demand has been incredible yeah, yeah. from people who've moved away from mm -hmm. East Kilbride. <laughs> There's such a person. Yeah, no, I'm sure there'll be one or two. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it remains to be seen who they are, to tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, just on that point, uh, you know, I know East Kilbride, I know the way they operate, they're a great club. 
that could accelerate all the plans that they've they see themselves gradually becoming a professional club. That money could accelerate the process. Of course, it could, and the spin-off for the the whole town itself, you know, and all the the the, the clubs that are under it, all, all the young kids, and I see they're going to uh, open that up to a lot of the people from the area. Yeah, may, may even be a chance for the council to upgrade the roundabouts as well, uh, <laughs> although that could take maybe eight or nine million pounds. Um, we'll come back after the break. We'll talk more with uh, Jerry McCabe about the weekend's football and, of course, the Scottish League Cup semi-finals. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin, and every night we are on 7 o'clock. You can watch the repeat at half past 10, Monday to Friday. And let's not forget, on a Saturday afternoon, 2 till 6, we'll bring you all the goals, we'll offer opinion, even if it upsets managers in the Premiership. We still have a dig at them, and that's what this show's all about. Uh, and uh, a fair bit of banter on a Saturday afternoon with uh, Ruffy Gordon-Smith and Frank McAvenny will be joining us this Saturday. Saturday. Um, let's talk about the officials have stated that they feel Andy Halliday's uh, gesture um, could have sparked a, a riot among the Morton fans. I'm still not buying it, Ruffy. I mean, what kind of fans are we developing mm -hmm. in Scotland who are upset when a player puts his fist mm -hmm. up in the air and says, yes, we've scored. Come on. Yeah, that, that, from the outside looking in, it looks that way, but I keep saying that. I'm not sticking up for the referees, but the rules are there, you know, and if they've got to apply them, you know, and it's it's the same as the one, the the, the, the player after he scores, and we all want to see somebody celebrating, but yeah. running, jumping into the fans and everybody surging forward and all that kind of thing. The, the referees <laughs> have got to take that into consideration. If you want to change the rules, change yeah. them at the end of the season. Yeah. Don't talk about them once they happen. You know, the rules are there for them to force them. You know, if the club, any club, get together and say, right, we want to change that rule about taking your jersey off, we want to change that rule about, just change it. Yeah. And we wouldn't be having all this debate. Well, I mean, amazingly on this programme, and we've been doing it for a considerable amount of time, and that is the first time you've offered some kind of sensible um, almost, oh, you know, yeah, uh, an opinion, quite, an, opin an opinion which will yeah. have referees <laughs> up and down the country thinking, you know, Ruffy, really, I'm reassessing <laughs> him as a pundit. Whereas, you know, I'm looking at it, I'm thinking to myself, what an old fuddy duddy. <laughs> that is a load of claptrap. Well, I mean, at the well, end sorry. of the day, Jerry, you score a goal, the team celebrates, we're trying to get fans back to the game. <laughs> we want, you know, you want people to enjoy it, a wee bit of banter. There's no way Andy Halliday's gesture would have sparked a riot. Well, I saw it in Sky last night, and, I just, and it seemed like he, was, he wasn't he over it. Was he not in the middle of the park or something? Mm -hmm. But even at that, it, but as Ruffy says, the rules have got to follow. I think they come under pressure from you know the guys in the stand, the delegates, you know, the yes. delegates mm -hmm. in the stand, and you know, the officials up there. You know, put pressure on them. Maybe they're under pressure from the police. But, uh, the least thing you could do, you know, the worst thing you could do is antagonise the opposition fans. But I'm a great one for celebrating, you know. I wouldn't, uh, they stay in the park, over their own fans, celebrate. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not a lover of uh, players taking their strips off and all that carry on. Yeah. Probably because we couldn't get them off in their day, couldn't his edge to get them off. But it's, I like, you've got to celebrate a goal. In that, yeah. that's yeah. It. Especially if it's, you know, it's a, it's a, a if it, more so if it's a winning goal yeah. and you're up and you're giving it. It's Jerry, I, get, part I, of the game. I really do get the, um, the the fact you're talking about, you know, when, when uh, players jump into the crowd as well, that's, you know, it can be worrying um, because obviously players, you know, mm. fans do surge down. Uh, roughly. I get that, I buy into it, but, you know, I, I don't think Andy Halliday's was, um, you know, anything that would have sparked a riot, to be perfectly no. honest with you. I don't think it was on the same scale as, uh, what's his name, had to be yours one. When he scored and ran yes. the whole <laughs> thing to the park, yeah, the 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's called that's, that's called a noise up in Glasgow. <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, and almost yeah. certainly in Edinburgh as well. But uh, I was I was going to say to you, there's only one time when I really worried about a player. Uh, jumping into um, the crowd when he scored a goal. Uh, and that was when Mo Johnson scored for Rangers in the Old Firm game with a minute to go. <laughs> <laughs> and when he jumped into the crowd, I thought, hmm, I wonder if he'll get back in there. <laughs> 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 yeah. but, take, uh, take a chance. Uh, oh, take a chance. He was taking a chance, but uh, uh, Mo still laughs about it to this day. OK, um, that's the gesture. Um, let's look at some of the uh, movers and shakers, because there's a fair bit of it. One of them concerns you, um, uh, Jerry. Uh, Kevin Thompson signed for Hibs for a third time. Yeah. 
I don't think there's any doubt. I, I, don't, I don't think I'm speaking out of turn. I don't think there's any doubt when Kevin Thompson was fit, you and Paul really liked him in the middle of the park for Dundee. Yeah, that's why uh, Paul brought him to the, the club. And we, we gave, Paul, uh, we gave uh, Kevin his debut at Hibs when I was here with Bobby. And at the time, Bobby was quite unsure because he wasn't doing it in under 21s. And I remember we got up to Dundee and we were short, we were struggling, you know, players, few injuries. And we said, said to Bobby, just go throw him in. You've got to know. And he was outstanding that day, and his, his career kicked on from there. On the ball, not down his ability, great ability on the ball, pass the ball, composed on the ball. And But the problem we had with Kevin, he was struggling fitness-wise. He maybe trained once or twice a week if he was lucky. And we, we really, we needed him, he was our captain. And and in games, we just really, you know, we didn't know what we were getting with, with Kevin because he, he thought his, his body was struggling with all the travelling and it was the least wee thing, it was causing him all sorts of wee th problems with you know hamstrings and things like that. But on his day, you know, Kevin, uh, uh, Kevin Thompson was a top player for us. Yeah. But <coughs> as I say, when he wasn't available to us, then obviously he's wanting to try and get in the coaching side, it, so there's an opportunity for him to, to go. So, you know, wish him all the best, hope he goes and, he goes and does well there. Whether he gets in the Hibs side, you know, because Hibs are flying, but obviously a good addition to the squad. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, when he was fit, um, Ruffy, you know, I think he's, you know, a forward thinking player. He always is looking for that mm -hmm. forward pass. You know, there's some midfielders have made a career out of playing a square ball. Yeah, and I, th I think uh, we are not the only ones that were absolutely astounded when Terry Butcher started to phase him out of the, the Hibs side, you know, and he sort of, a, that was the first person they moved on, which astounded me because you're right you know and Jerry will tell you when you've got an experienced player like that as we spoke about with, with Gary Harkins if you've got people around about him you know and he's making passes he's looking up he's he's a yard ahead of everybody yeah, he's making yeah. that pass for the runners and that's what he was doing with Hibs mm. and uh, I'm sure if if Hibs can get him on 20-25 minutes in crucial games I'm sure he'll be a big influence. What do you make of Hart's move for John Suter? I mean, that's probably just phase mm. one of going maybe back in for him. Yes, and uh, I mean, I think there'll be a few clubs in for him. You know, I think, it's, I think his father, you know, uh, looks after his, uh, where he's going and gives him the advice. So, but I, I think you'll find there'll be English clubs will be fancying him as well. Yeah, and, and of course, uh, Jerry, you know only too well, you've been working through uh, all the divisions in Scotland in your experience. Um, Alec Ray's got a tough job trying to galvanise the squad he's inherited at St Mirren. He's managed to get David Clarkson uh, on loan from Motherwell, which I, I think will be a shot in the arm to Clarkson because he just wants to play, but it's somebody that will offer something different up front for St Mirren. Yeah, well, I think he's a great signing, David Clarkson. When he came to Dundee last season, see, last season, it was fire for us. He scored the first goal uh, nine nine games you know, in a row. Then he went through a spell where he didn't score, and but he was great about the place. You know, he was a great player to have there to bring on, and that, and he he done a right right good job for us. And when he went to Mallow, I know there another there was a few championship uh, teams in for him. But when he went to Mallow, I thought you know he's got another wee chance at it. But I think it's a good signing for Alec. I know he's got a tough job. Alec knows he sell what he's got to do, but. I hope they give them time to try and turn things around. They're a good club. They've got a few good players in there. But I think what I like needs now is, is maybe more experience and bringing David Clarkson in. I know he's trying to get a few more experienced players in. And I'll hopefully he gets that opportunity and you know, turn them around. Yeah, mm -hmm. turn them around. <coughs> and of course, knowing Alec as we do, Ruffy will want to get them in the playoffs. <laughs> Still mm. won't rule that out. Yeah, and uh, as Jerry said there, if they went on a run, uh, there's every chance of that. You know, there's a lot of teams, you know, if you get some kind of consistency and start picking up points, they'll start believing in themselves again. And who knows? A couple of quick points. James McFadden could extend his stay at Motherwell if the MLS deal doesn't come through. Uh, I think it's uh, Philadelphia, if my memory says me correct. Mm -hmm. um, that would be good just to come on 20 minutes, last 20 minutes of a game, do something a wee bit out of the... Yeah, and there'll be certain games when you, you can't throw him on, you know, and uh, he, he's a fans player, you know, they, he'll bring fans into the ground, uh, but he'll be hoping he gets longer than that, he'll be hoping he can get 90 minutes, you know, to show what he can do, because they used to be single-handedly one game for Scotland. Yeah, and just briefly, Jerry, he's a playing Motherwell at the weekend, I have you as a top six side, um, when you're on your game and you're scoring goals, you must feel confident you can do that. Yeah, well, certainly, you know, we know how difficult this league is, you win two games, you're in the top six, where we are now, you lose two, you're back down in about seventh or eighth. I watched Mother on last Saturday, and the man you're talking about there, James McFadden, he came on the last 20 minutes and 
they got their goal when he was on. Uh, I thought Molo had a right good spell in the game when it went nil, when they went nil down. They could have maybe equalised when they took the lead. Then Ross County had a couple of wee chances to score before they scored their second one. Uh, but Ross County is always a difficult team to play against. Mm. And I just hope, you know, on Saturday when they, when they come that Fadzi is not in the starting lineup. <laughs> <laughs> You see, uh, he never likes a player that can do something he used to do himself. That's it, Ruffy. And of course, uh, you know, I couldn't stop him coming on the programme today because he, when he wins at the five aside, Ruffy, he wants to go on every media programme that's going. Mm -hmm. He's on a run at the moment. Well, I could ask Ruffy, you know, I start here. In two months, I've been Peter's side. Never won again. Mm. Today, I'm on Peter's side. We win. So, well, yeah. who's the common denominator here? Well, absolutely. I'll tell you who it is. It's McCabe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, we're delighted that you come in, Jerry, and I, and I know uh, we hope Dundee uh, do indeed have a great season and get in there to the top six. Um, Ruffy and myself will be back with you tomorrow on the programme. Hopefully, you can join us at seven o'clock from Ruffy, from myself, Peter Martin, and Jerry McCabe. Thanks for watching.